Chairman. Um, thank you. This is an incredibly important panel, so appreciate you all being here. Let me follow up on Senator Barrasso's um, question, um, Dr. Costello, to you. With respect to the production of medical isotopes, um, I am interested in how um, we can utilize the current nuclear reactors for the production of it versus uh, the advanced technology that we're looking at, which one is better. So whatever research you put together and you submit, would you please submit it to my office as well? Absolutely. Thank you, because I think this is an important issue. Are you familiar with the GE-180 tracer? I am not, no. Okay, so the GE-180 tracer um, was uh, approved by the FDA to um, help really understand the underlying causes of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. And it happened in Las Vegas at the Lou Ruva Clinic, mm -hmm. Cleveland Clinic, by one of our doctors. And this is a perfect example of supporting what you're saying, right. why this production, medical isotopes, are so important. But in layman's terms, can you explain? When people hear medical isotopes, that's very confusing, uh, I, I think. And, and it doesn't explain how this is utilized to help uncover the causes and determine really what we're trying to understand with Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, and so many others. Can you explain it in layman's terms how it's utilized? Um, sure. Let's, let's take a, a simple example um, using PET imaging. So the uh, GE machine that you mentioned, uh, I'm sure, is a machine that is used to produce uh, PET isotopes. Um, so um, we'll take PET imaging and a, a fairly um, generic use of that technology in uh, the diagnosis of cancer. So um, a fluorine-18 radio, uh, radioisotope is attached to a sugar molecule, glu glucose, uh, and that's injected into a, a, a patient. And um, glucose is used by every cell in the body. Mm -hmm. um, but cells that are... Um, particularly active, um, that have a much higher level of metabolism, um, absorb more of that. And so with PET imaging using fluorinated glucose, FDG, um, physicians can actually diagnose where uh, cancer has metastasized. Um, that same technology can be used with a, a patient that has been uh, uh, diagnosed with cancer and then um, used after treatment to determine if some of those uh, tumors have actually uh, uh, decreased in size or actually um, gone away. Um, so it's a, it's a nice uh, example of how uh, nuclear medicine and PET imaging can be used, not only in diagnosis, but in forming treatment. Thank you so much. And, and then you, you ended your testimony talking about the need for stakeholder agency advisory committee can you talk a little bit, what, what, your vision for that? What, what do you anticipate? If we were to put something together like that, what, what would be its duties and functions? What, what, are, you, what are you thinking? Um, the isotope program had um, basically uh, through uh, the, uh, the NSAC um, um, uh, underwent a, uh, uh, an, uh, uh, an overview, uh, a review of isotope needs. Um, it was the uh, NSAC-I uh, isotope subcommittee that uh, has done that twice. The last report was in 2015. We think as, a, as an industry association it would be helpful to actually provide an, uh, another report uh, working with stakeholders, industry, researchers, clinicians, the, the isotope program, DOE, um, to evaluate uh, current needs, potential opportunities moving forward. And the, and the resources needed to accomplish the, uh, uh, the goals of the, uh, the action items that come out of that, uh, come out of that uh, committee. Thank you. And then, uh, Dr. Chodok, um, let me ask you this. When it comes to all things nuclear, can you expand on the need for state and local input? Do you think it's important to have state and local input uh, as we look and move forward on all of these areas? As, uh, yes, as a utility, it's absolutely essential that we not only serve customers with safe, reliable power, but we serve them in the way that they want to be served. And we need to work very collaboratively with state and local governments to ensure that, that everybody's on board with the way that we serve. There are multiple options in, to serve customers, and, and generally speaking, we, we try to remain techno technologically agnostic. In other words, we're looking for the solution that that provides that reliable, low-cost power, but also one that, that communities are willing and, and interested in having as part of their, part of their mix. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.